Here we go. Let's kick this thing off. trained musicians and it sounds like it, jazz players will back off and play da, 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 and back off the tone rather than, you know, have you seen the little T with the two big O's after it when you play classical? Um, it's exactly the opposite with jazz. You want more front edge and violence to the attack and a little less volume on any, everything else to kind of give you that clarity of sound. And you guys know the listening tree, everybody's listening to the lead players. Lead players are listening back to the lead trumpet player. And on a swinger, who do you listen to, Michael? Bass player. Also, I could use a little more volume, a little less. <laughs> oh, you're not amped up. You're good, you're good. No problem, no problem. Um, dig into the, dig in with your fingers a little more. I need to hear that pop. That percuss is beginning of the attack. Because that's going to set the time for him. He's keying in, he's keying in on your fingers. You're in, uh, and you're swinging the band. So you're driving, okay? I'm sorry, what's your name? Joel. Joel, that's right. I should have known. I'm in, I'm in and out of with you. Um, let's try that one more time for the beginning. Think about clarity in those parts. Listen in, listen back. <clears throat> and Michael, you should be listening to Joel over here for the time. Here we go. Make that distinction between intro and the actual beginning of the tune. Here we go. One. Style. 
that was good, but the longer we went, it kind of got wishy-washy, and I couldn't hear, I couldn't hear the bone parts. Yeah. You went forth with that? Yeah. So, uh, you know, even though we're playing softer, keep the aggressiveness going and pop those attacks. What we want to be able to do is kind of see through the ensemble, figuratively, you don't really see it because it's audio, but bones and rhythm. Keep that, keep that line aggressive and keep the front edge of the notes really popping. Okay, here we go. Uh, 25. Bones and rhythm. One, two, three, one, two, three. caricature of what it actually is on the page. We're not in a salon in France. We're in a concert hall and the nearest people to you are probably 30 feet that way. So you really have to keep everything poppy and, and really make a, a supreme effort to make uh, different, uh, <laughs> make those attacks different, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I tried to come up with a, you know, 20 cent word and Came up short. But let's go, uh, Saxons. Let's hear your soli. Where is that, 41? 41. Good playing, guys. And the second time we ran through that, did you guys hear the clarity? It cleaned right up when you were thinking about the attacks and hitting those releases and maybe not giving as much volume to the back end of the note. Here we go, Saxons. One, three, one, two, three. <laughs> And for several different reasons, but one of the big ones in jazz is the releases are going to set up the next thing coming up. I can train a monkey to play attacks. So those are going to clean up from playing the chart four or five times. You're going to figure out where those attacks are. But you know, when I'm playing lead, I'm usually I'm thinking about those cutoffs and getting a good breath for the next thing coming up and trying to set up those rhythms with my releases, right? And for the brass. You're going to stick your tongue in the mouthpiece and actually violently, you know, sax it, stop, stop the reap with the tongue, all that kind of stuff. Let's try that one more time, guys. Try to dig in, think about the back half of those notes. As players, we always think about attacks, but listeners want you to turn that phrase. Think about it when you're sitting in a concert hall, you want to hear the end of that phrase. You want that phrase to turn. So we kind of have to, you know, reach a happy medium where we're thinking about the same thing as the listener. Here we go. Same thing. Sax and rhythm. Uh, right on that solely. One, three. I want two, three. <laughs> Let's go, uh, let's take it there with everybody, 41 with everybody, and get into, I assume there's a solo section back here somewhere. Yep. Here we go. Who's our, who's blowing on this thing? Okay. Here we go. So I'll start at 41, and we'll go, we'll go into the solo section a little bit. Everybody? One, two, one, two, three. <laughs>
the tone needs to be less and the attacks need to be more. Ooh, I do that. Da, da, da. Really pop those attacks, especially when you're playing backgrounds and bring the volume down. Um, also, solos. Um, this is this is a hard chart to solo. It just is. I don't know if you've heard the the buddy the classic buddy Rich recording of this. I think it's a big swing face. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh, some amazing lead playing from a 19 year old Bobby Shue on that record. Um, but solo wise, this tune's funny. But if you take your cues from the melody, it it starts to make sense. Where you got da 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 the second phrase is another long note with a little tag on the end, another noun, and then ba -ba -da 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 -da, everything happens, verb. Right? So you've got boy and girl meet. Does that make sense? Everybody nod vacantly if you understand that. Okay. So um, the way you can consider this as a soloist is to save your cool licks. And the way the way the guys in Buddy's band do it is to play long those long kind of drawn out nouns. And and then you know play long figures at the beginning of the phrase and then put kind of, put kind of a bebop little tag on the end of your phrase and then when you hit that third phrase play all your cool stuff that's you know that's five chord right when you hit that verb jazz goes over the five chord so you want to save all your really smoking bebop stuff for that last phrase. Okay, if you take it you know, like a, do you, see, do you see what I'm saying, soloist? Take kind of take your cues from the melody for what you're playing, and don't try and play too many notes on you know your one chord and your four. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's let's get into that one more time for the backgrounds. Jared, uh, you start at uh, 75. Right, so you got a break before that. Let's go. Uh, let's go eight before 77. Is that a good, that's a good spot. Let's try it. eight bars before 77 so that we, Jared can get into his break. And uh, great job keeping the time from sagging. I kind of gave you a little look and we we're starting to pull back a little bit. Same thing with the horn players. You guys want to be focused on attack and not letting the energy drop even though you're playing a lower volume, right? Here we go. Uh, into the solo section, eight bars before 77. Everybody? One.
times get a little ragged. Like I was talking about, we're hitting the beginning of those phrases like at 129. By the time we hit the end of the phrase, our time's getting a little ragged, so let's, uh, let's play a little game. Uh, being very careful with the horns, everybody, everybody's got a chair, right? Okay, stand up. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to count you off. I'm going to say one, three, a one, uh, and I want you to sit down on one of the next bar. You understand what's going on? So I'll go one, three, a one, bam. Right? Here we go. In rhythm section, do something rhythmic. You don't have to sit down, but do something. Grab your instrument or you know, put your hand on something or try and feel this with me. One, three, a one. Right, there's only one place where that can be, right? There's only one place where that downbeat is, there's only one place where your butt hits the chair. Same thing, up. Now, how do we fix time problems? Anybody? Starts with an S, so? So divide, exactly right. So, while I'm counting, you gotta be thinking, swinging, right? So, so you know, this basic style stuff is always tricky. So think that subdivision, focus in, think it's non ensemble, and put one right where it goes. Here we go. One, three, a one. Much better, one more time. Much closer, we had a little bit of da 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 da, but it only goes one place, right? One, three, a one. Awesome job. Now let's play that figure at 129. Keep that going. Try to, try to think about the cutoffs. Especially where you have uh, that last bit in that bar, you got off on one, and then a, a kick on the end one. So you got ah da ah da ah da. And if you think about the release coming right on one, lining that kick up on the end of one is pretty easy. It'll it'll almost play itself. So let's play let's play that uh, those figures like eight bars at 129. I'm gonna do it on time. Good. I'm about what 15 minutes in. Something like that. 19. 19? Okay. Here we go. I get excited and lose track of time. 129. Here we go, everybody. One, three, I want. <laughs> direction and go somewhere and say something. Here we go, same thing. One, 129. Man, that's not Here we go. <clears throat> Last time. One, three, oh, one. sounds like when you can kind of hear through the ensemble and there's a real translucence in the parts. As a horn line, that's what you want, right? Keep, keep that going. At the lower volumes, the attacks still have to stay violent and stay up front. It's a real attack-driven music, especially swing. So you really want that hard ping on the attacks. Um, what else? We talked about volume levels. Generally, every time you play a tune, you're going to have a loud intro, and then the melody comes in, and to a degree, it's always going to drop back. So you always want that that uh, that kind of terrace dynamic where you know the kind of the bottom drops out and the melody comes in, so that the audience can really focus in on the cool part of, of the tune, right? And really get that that hook, that first melody. Um, so that's all I got for you today, guys. Thank you very much for uh, having me in here, and I hope I was able to get some 
some points across to you. So. Good stuff, Steve.